round three. Fight. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. We're fighting today. Round three. Can't give up on the Marvel machine just right yet. But maybe when I finish this CAD file, I know I will be able to give up on the Marvel machine. So, um, we had an um, error this morning that I think is teaching me a great lesson. So, I have been uh, talking uh, big about my parametric game in improving only to see the model completely break today, which is very normal. So you can see in the timeline, we have the normal um, bro broken stuff. And I just realized that I think I'm going to do the parametric structure a little bit different. It's early still in the model, so I can still change these things around. So the way I've built this up, and this is kind of what I want to get to immediately, is that everything is driven by this sketch. So these pivot points are moving around. And when sketching complicated parts, like this gear and stuff like that, every time I move this wheel around, all the sketches and stuff has to move around as well. And I've been thinking about another way to get parts to move around without moving the sketches. And I think I'm going to start trying this. So instead of sketching, making these parts at these pivot points and having the drums move around every time I want to move this drum where the part is being made, I'm going to make the part at Fusion's origin point. And then I'm just going to put it in place with a joint in, in kind of the assembly file. Um, so if that's a little convoluted for you, if you if you don't work with Fusion 360, that's very understandable. But basically, it's good. It was a good lesson for me to have this issue today, uh, because it's still so early, so I can still restructure how I think about these things. So that's what I'm doing right now, and it's. I'm quite pissed off, <laughs> 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 honestly, because I think I should have, um, like, I mean, you've seen me make 100 videos about this same thing for like five years. And this is, th th it is not easy. Um, and I tried something, it didn't work because I, and, and, and here's the thing. So the reason this one broke is because I left green sketch lines here. So that's a mistake, but my new idea, when I CAD everything on the origin, I can even use green stuff. So it's almost like a meta discussion about design, because you know I want to make, um, so these are the two previous machines, I want to make the third machine um, more, uh, what, what's the word? Uh, the tolerances has to be smaller, like more forgive, forgiving. I want to make the sign decisions that are more forgiving. So just like I want to do that mechanically, also in the way I build up this digital CAD file, which is going to be big, I think if I CAD stuff around the origin and constrain them into place, it's going to be more forgiving. The way I built it up until this morning, uh, I had this green thing and the whole thing just falls apart. Hmm. So my idea is to do it at the origin file instead and that's what i'm doing right now how are we feeling hannes 3000 and how are we feeling in chat um thanks for being with us through thick and thin some of these days it's just going to be fine we're just gonna take beats in the boxing ring and my nose is bleeding my eyes needs to be cut open pretty soon from the coach but <laughs> you're still here with us at this rocky moment so thank you for that is there any other way to feel than just simply terrific? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. I think chat is with me. It's a beautiful day. We have learned how to take losses through the years, Martin. We always emerge victoriously in the end. Okay. So, just get to cleaning up. You caused this mess. Now you get to clean your room, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have I have a small little thing left. It's that I need to make these lines black, and just sometimes 
these ugly lines need to become black. And then I'm... Hey, what am I saying? Didn't I just say that we could accept green? Maybe I don't have to make them black. For some reason, these uh, lines does not want to be constrained. So let me give this one more shot. I don't know why they're not turning black now. And Simon Bianche is back here and he says, I sent you a basic tutorial on how I did the joints. Even if you end up completely redesigning the part, it doesn't matter. At least you're learning how to use CAD better that way. I am learning how to use CAD by doing this too. So that's something we'll look at uh, perhaps in the, later in the stream. We will look at it. That's brilliant. Thank yeah, you. Thank you very, very much. So this is relating to another loss we had, another <laughs> round we lost <laughs> this morning uh, with the motion links. And we have, uh, I've seen some videos that it looks like um, what I wanted to do was possible. And we have a complete tutorial on how to do it. But first of all, I'm going to fix this. And thanks for keeping us company here in the boxing ring. And Magor the Cruel, I've missed this so much. We missed you as well, the beautiful audience out there keeping us company. So nice to have you back here. Let's watch Martin do some cleaning, right? Yeah, and... Yes. <laughs> Oh, yes. So let's try to make these blue lines black. So let's start with some... Okay, this is how already been constrained. Okay. I have to take this from the beginning here. This looks like a straight line. It's actually a curve. So we have that. Is it coincident with this? Yes. Okay, the length of this line has not been constrained. Let's do that. And then... And here we have Kungen of Ust coming back here and saying, Oh, you're back! Your streams has a magical effect on me, making me more productive with my projects. Greetings and good luck from your Sweden! Thank you so much. Kungen of Ust, the king of cheese, is here with <laughs> us today. Lovely to have you. That's fantastic. And RSD Trigger is replying to Simon Bianche. These live streams give us a good opportunity to contribute to the MM3 project and learn something new about CADing at the same time. Now that's the beautiful thing about these streams, right? We can teach each other stuff. Yeah, and, and um, we can leave the frustration of having the... Um, the physical machine that is not related to the design. Um, I'm really, really happy for that. Uh, that we can all look at the same thing and talk about the same thing. Uh, to me, that's uh, magical. And people in chat here are saying also, like, aka Marco69, please, please use an add-in script to design the gears accurately and easily. Uh, it's a gear generator add-in script. Yeah, we, we actually used a helical gear generator and I'm using the spur gear generator as well. Um, for these uh, pulleys, um, it's a very special uh, tooth shape. And um, I think the, it's the best would actually be to get someone from the company um just cadding um 200 uh, tooth uh, gear shape Th the teeth i'm making now will be redone i've already planned for that um but since since these teeth are custom made to um to the belt that preys on noise it preys on noise I don't think, um, actually, we have both the helical gear generator and a spur gear generator, and I think neither one of them would, would apply in, in this case. Um, so let's just 
Keep on trucking. Sometimes in a sketch, lines just ref oh. Now we're on this again. Also, what we're looking at right here is Fusion having to reprogram all these gear teeth. And I think um, every time we move a sketch around, it has to redo th that computation. If we just um, program it um, if in the center of the origin, I think that will be so much better. Taylor Ogburn, please do some summary videos. As a father and full-time manager, I don't have time to watch super long videos. I want to stay engaged because this journey is amazing. We got good news for you. That's exactly what we're going to do on the main channel. And we're aiming to do that on Wednesdays, where we will summarize what we have been done, what has been done during the week and where we're at with the project at this moment. Yep. So it will be a short 10 to 15 minutes just. 10, max 10. <laughs> Morgan eight, says max 10. 8 to 10. No, we got, we, we, we're not going to rant in those videos. It's going to be, hey everyone, this has happened with the machine. We're happy about this. We're worried about this. Hope you had a great week. See you next week. That's Boom. exactly what's going to happen on Wednesday. So super nice to hear that, that you, you want the summaries and we will make sure to bring them to you. Yeah. So keep an eye out on the main channel for that. And these live streams will continue here on Vintigotten Live. Yeah. I'm going to take another L against this constraint. I left it green, but that's also a little bit cool because um, the new way I'm going to do these kind of things can allow for green sketch lines. Because this sketch will never move the way I want to build it up now. And so it's a kind of an anti-fragile system. Would it have been better if I never used green sketch lines? Yes. But there's another word for redundancy, Hannes, that we usually um that we that we use a lot. Okay. Um rigid. No. Flawless. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, it's a, such a nice word. Chat, you know what to do? Synonym for redundancy? It's not really redundancy. It's the... We talked about it a lot. Um, it's the... What is it called? Give them a second. It will come. It's a lot of I's and R's in the... Resiliency. Yeah, yes. Jeremy Cox. Gretzky. Bringing the brilliance. Gretzky. Uh, resiliency. So I think... Cadding complicated part around the CAD origin. Um, and just move them with joints. I think it's a more resilient way to build this. Now this line is blue because we don't have the 75 degree angle. Chat is blowing up everybody. Want to be where the puck is going. Resilience. That was exactly the word I was looking for. Awesome. Um, like on days like this, when most of the things I touch turn to ash, I need to have some resilience in my own mood <laughs> as well. D. Croc, one thing that was beaten into us in school and experience was to always fully constrain your sketches. It is very easy to it is very easy to bite you in the butt when you least expect it. Yeah. Well it's 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 lesson one and this blew my whole CAD project up today because I I didn't do it. You got bitten in the butt. Yeah. So. Oh, we're done. Uh, computing. 
I got completely bitten by this. Can you zoom out, please, my friend? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we have the crash zoom. Crash zoom. And Mike Perry, Hannes, can you say resilience? <laughs> there you have it, Mike. That's beautiful. Okay, so now it's going to be... Nice. So this is the prog drum, which means that I'm not gonna have these things. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me check where the loop drum is right now. Are we still at the... Okay, we're not at the origin with this one. Okay, great. So the loop drum, I'm gonna close. Don't save. <laughs> I love this chat so much. What's happening? Archie, Archie the Archie the Tory. And what does the silent belt prey on? Noise. Noise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to have um to have uh, some positivity around me when when uh, when when the boxing rounds, when the going gets tough. Um, so what I want to do now is that I, now I'm going to use this design for um, for both of these things. Let's see if these features works as well. I think so. No, we have the save delay again. Yeah, the save delays there sometimes. It's weird. It is weird. Sometimes it just wants to... But I'm going to close this down. Ah, oh, no save delay. So here in the tree, I'm going to archive these two files, this one and uh, this one. Just going to move it into, this is like the elephant uh, uh, graveyard from Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't go there. <laughs> That's where we put those. And then I'm going to um, copy this saved design. And I'm going to call it, um, now we have some nice OSS error. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and we will soon be out of uh, this dead end. But I'm, I'm enjoying it as well um, because of Sometimes I felt I had to take out the real struggle from the videos. Like, really good edited videos, you can show everything uh, when you have, like, the skill and the time. Um, but I think we... Uh, I enjoy showing everything. Okay, for example, right now I'm enjoying showing this OSS error that I don't know what it means. Maybe because it's opened. Let's copy this file now. Hmm. Get the same F store OSS dot error uh, underscore error. Does anyone in chat know why that is? You heard him chat. <laughs> we can just Google this phrase, maybe I can do that as well. Um, they will come up with an answer. Yeah, gr gr the gratis. Here you have it. fstore.oss.error. 
It's endless. Absolutely endless. You crossed one too many lines. That's what happened. Something like that. <laughs> Something like that. Let's open this design again. The design itself is healthy. Maybe if I save us in here. Save us. Okay. That worked. Taylor solution. Restarting Fusion 360 on your computer should resolve this issue. If it does not, you may work around this issue by opening the file you're trying to copy and using the save copy as. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Gretzky skating where the save as is going. <laughs> um, it also feels like... like um, so, loop drum. We do a save as of the loop drum. And then we have yet another file to move to the elephant uh, churchyard. Graveyard. Churchyard is maybe a word as well. Churchyard. Now, my friends, we can head into our drivetrain and take a last look at our broken past. <laughs> so here is the result of the previous... Um, structure and it's a linked component this one and I'm going to delete it let's see if we break something else in the timeline maybe maybe not we'll see later and this one um, say bye bye the loop <laughs> <laughs> loop drum Deletion caused downstream failures. I know, I know. Take it easy. So let's save this. We have to wait on this save. Apparently this is also something new. We just have to wait. We just have to hang out here yeah. on this 3000 have some patience, waiting you know. screen. Yeah, resilience. Resilience. If... I get to a world tour with Marble Machine 3. I think I've showed some resilience. <laughs> yeah. When the world tour happens, you mean. We really love each and everyone hanging out with with us here. It's so fun. It's it's it feels like I'm starting like a nice new little corner on the internet again. Oh yes. Um with resilient Gretzkis. Yeah. And Mike Perry has found the stick and puck emoji, so we got a lot of pucks now in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. Magnus Sörensson, I'm going to buy some of those belts and hang them in the ceiling to silence my neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> that's brilliant. I'm waiting for this to... Oh, I can show you what we did on last stream while we're waiting for this. Yay! Um, so this was the one on the MMX and now we have made a design that is adjustable repeatedly adjustable with this little screw so this is the new idea this is um, a kind, kind of ugly cutting but this replaces this so I'm happy for that let's save this one And then we head back here. Oh, and there we go. Good. So now we're going to try to update. This might um, hang fusion. So let's go. Oh, right away. Okay, good, good, good. Works right away. Ooh. Ooh. Now I'm just going to find... Uh, Good spot in the timeline to insert the drums. I think. Let's 
So let's take the loop first. And let's look at the master sketch. Should be this one. Are the sketches hidden? Yes, that's why I'm lost. Here's my sketches. And I think we created um, let's isolate this. Yeah. We created these. So here's the solution. We're going to join to these from the master sketch instead of um, designing in place and having it move around at all times. Yeah, that's probably making sense. Distance reference. In you, Yasha. Now you have to choose a position in time to add a new component. Crazy stuff. And I'm still with you, In you. You were on the last stream as well, as confused as me. <laughs> I'm inserting this drum and it turns up. Why is there a pulley? in that design. Let's cancel this. Oh, because there is a pull in that design. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Now we're joining. We're joining this drum with this point in the master sketch. Whoa. So it goes there. So instead of moving the whole design around, we use the master sketch. We use the sketch. This feels so much better. Um, I'm not sure we're at the correct position, but let's find out. We happen to be at the correct position. Sweet. Nice. So let's then do the same for the prog wheel. This looks like it's not going to be in the correct position though. Let's actually take our time to now maybe let's see how we should do this. Well, we can offset the joint as well. We don't have to be like completely rigid in our way we're thinking about this. Let's hang, head over and fetch the programming drum. Let's insert it. And you can see it's coming down there. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. also has the stupid pulley. We okay that position. This is not what I did on the first machine because I hated joints on the first machine because I thought they were crashing fusion all the time. And I kind of think that's still 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 true, but I think joints are better now. So let's attach it to this one and then let's offset the joint uh, to the correct base. 47. There we go. Boom. <laughs> so now we have a better parametric structure according to the title of this live stream. Yes. Oh, and <laughs> Slice of Sparta just reminded us, time for hydration break. Cheers. Keep up the great work, both of you. These streams are awesome. Cheers. Cheers, my friend. Cheers, Cheers everyone out there. Hope you're having a good time. Oh, I'm in such a mood today. <laughs> I'm in such a mood today. I this, this I fusion has thrown me. Ev it has thrown everything at me. I still here you are, 
fighting the fight. You won't back down. You're resilient. As we learned, resilient. Mail. What is this command? Oh, wow. Let's now see. Let's now see what else has fallen apart in our house. I think a lot of people like SolidWorks because I think, if I understand correctly, that it doesn't it it doesn't really allow you to make these mistakes as much. If I if I have understood correctly, then I've recently heard that a lot of SolidWorks lovers are withdrawing their recommendations because of some recent changes. I don't know what that is, but. That's something I heard anyway. Let's check this sketch. Obviously, things are off in here. And Cyber asks Martin Norhanes question Will there be access to the sketches and 3D files sometime down the line? Yes. It's in the description text. We actually had the latest this morning uploaded, so you can download and tinker around in. So we're already getting a lot of useful um, feedback in CAD it's, itself. And that's what I'm looking for the absolute most in this whole project. When we have a better machine, people can look at it in CAD and they can see issues like in CAD that we didn't have that on, on the Marble Machine X. So everyone, all the Gretzkys out there will be able to work on the actual file. So there's one step file available now. And that's actually not with the sketches. So I should op upload a Fusion 360 file later today. Um, and talking about resilience, another thing I talked about earlier in the stream today is that some work in Fusion 360, I can never get right when I'm stressed or when I'm trying to do it fast. Then we take a deep breath. So um, timing... Adjust, adjust sketch. I'm going to look what went wrong over here. It's obviously we have obviously a line that is not concentric. So let's start the investigation and make you concentric with you. Fail to solve um, it's these tangential constraints, these red ones. Let's start with deleting all these red constraints. And let's also delete this yellow thing. Oh God, it's breaking down. that's okay because we can fix that no ah it's tangential okay that's what that's what happened I don't really see why we need that line mm. So let's isolate this component. We're trying to figure out the format for the live streams. We have been discussing, like, so we, today we tried something else than what we did yesterday. Yesterday we left the stream going the whole day and maybe we can ask chat what, what, what for just some input, how it looks from your side, because when we do streams over six hours, we're not allowed to edit them. And when we, but when we left the stream on with just a pause screen, people stayed in chat, talk to each other and hang, hang out. So like we would love to just have feedback, like 
how it looks from, from your end. So today we made three separate streams because we want afterwards, we want to edit away all the breaks and have the video that is left being more efficient without a lot of breaks in it. Yeah. So we also have a lot of viewers who have been watching the back catalog as well, watching the past week's streams, getting ready for this. So you have watched everything. And how did you feel about the longer versus the shorter ones? Yeah, we're 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 curious for your for your feedback on on how it becomes. A lot of people get scared when they see uh, the the stream length and stuff like that, and we understand that. But like how the trade-off between making a nice live stream experience, but also having the videos that are still on the channel afterwards being a little bit approachable. That's basically the trade-off we are we are experimenting with at the moment. So yeah, as we can um, as we might have expected, people are it's it's divisive here. Keep it going. Stream all day is weird. I prefer with pauses. Definitely keep the stream running and maybe have songs playing while you're away. Separate is better, I think. Keep it going. Otherwise, I don't know if you're making a break or I've stopped. Yeah, so that's for people who may be listening to it. Okay, so we have all kinds of opinions. So far, I prefer one big stream because it allows to not miss anything by having to switch stream. Justin Deming, love the long streams. Maybe reset stream every five hours so you can edit. Shorter streams. <laughs> we won't get any real conclusion here. Oh, but it's super interesting to hear. Eight, five, six. And here we have Desert Pillar. When you edited the real live of uh, the chat broke. So that, that that's uh, one part of it. The, the chat breaks. That's that's a great question. Is the chat re? How much value do you find in the chat replay? Is that like like we really want it? Because that will inform a lot of this decision, actually. So that's the next question we, we would love to hear feedback on. How much do you value the chat replay after the live stream has ended? Because like what someone just wrote, when we trim beginning and end and middle, a chat replay is taken, taken off. You should run the streams however it's best for you, not us. We're with you regardless. Oh, that's beautiful. Like yesterday was so much easier for us. To just keep it keep it going, um, but we can make we can make this easy as well. So I'm working on this timing adjust thing, and I'm just trying to. Here we go. This looks better. Oh, the body's hidden. That's why. Okay. A lot of people really want the replay of chat. It's required for context. So who Okay, a lot of people want to replay um I'm going to see if I can make a poll here. I've never done this before. Oh, cool. Be with me. Cool. And I'm cleaning. I'm cleaning and cleaning. But I think actually what happened today when everything broke has led me into a much more resilient structure. So I think it actually was pretty nice that it happened. 
So we're gonna drill the... This is the timing clutch of the new design, which I'm super excited about because this is much better than the beautiful part we had on Mars X, but still much, much better. So I'm just gonna drill a hole in this aluminum part. I think it's an aluminum part, or maybe it's not. Let's see if I did this correctly. Where does the pole go? <laughs> <laughs> Is it a pole in chat? Yeah. Ah, oh, cool. I don't see it though. Yeah, we have it up there now. So you can vote for longer streams with breaks or three shorter streams. Let's see what chat has to say. So here's the indexing hole in the thing that will hold the little thing. <laughs> Good. Well done, Martin. Well done, Martin. Providing context in the thing that will hold the thing. Missing axis. Okay. I fixed it. Part of it anyway. So let's see where the pulley ends up. Oh, it lines up. Thank you. So you can see this aluminum bar here is connected to this pulley. And when we shift a pin in these holes right here and move that over one step, the relationship between the lower drum and the higher drum is changed by 0 0.8 millimeter. So that is very, very neat, I think. Let's see what happens here. These things are unbroken. Thank you for that. And with patience and resilience, we are moving our way into an unbroken timeline. It makes me very, very happy. I can just inform now that we have a new tool for our streams. We can now have polls. Fun. To ask people about opinions. That is... Wow. Really fun. We're venturing into the future here. <laughs> That's great. So let's see what else has broken. Does this mean that we're actually in the clear? Oh, nothing is broken. Wow, that feels great. So now I have to check that everything works. These holes should not be in the programming one. So let's open that one. And let's just remove those features. So I think these, some streams will be like more approachable than others. They will be more topical. And right now, what I'm doing now is that I'm just cleaning up parametric structure. So it's probably kind of hard to follow. Um, basically, what I'm doing is that I, I want to have a simple way to move everything around without things falling apart. And I think we will be able to test this very slow, very, very fast. Now I should upgrade this piece by hitting up here. And you should see these holes disappear. Compute finished. Ooh. And the holes disappeared. So that's good. But here comes now. So now I'm going to try what I did this morning. Um, I think already actually the position has changed. Yes. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Finally. Yes, I'm yes. out of the dead end. So we wanted to move this lower wheel to the left to get more um, space for the drums and uh, especially for the drum beaters. And what I'm going to do now, look at this, this looks cool. Yeah, it looks nice, doesn't it? So now I'm going to do something... Um, I'm going to stress test this. Let's head over to the main design. 
first. Or the main assembly, I mean. So this is where we're working with the distances. Mm -mm -mm. So let's upgrade. And let's hope Fusion is not compute finished. Good. Very good. You know what? What? It's so much faster now. Do you remember that we used to look at the sweep yeah, computing? Yeah, yeah. I think this structure is better because I don't see Fusion recalculating all those yeah. gear teeth all the time. It's not as bogged down now. No, and here comes the real test. With this simple measurement down here, 120 millimeter, I can move the loop drum to the left. There we go. And I'm also going to move this one um, a little bit upwards. Maybe the belt. I think even the belt should extract correctly. Um, so here we can now see that we need to upgrade this. And if we did this correctly, the wheels will move around without giving me a hard time. Update. Uh, Martin Chat found a problem with the belt tensioner. Let's see if I can find something about it. We have the O here. He says, important from Google. Where should a belt tensioner be placed? The best place for a tensioner on a belt drive is on the inside of the belt against the slack side. Some, someone wrote something about that yesterday as well. I think, uh, Lucas. But hang on. Hold that thought. Hold because that we have thought. to look if... So now it is computing the sweeps. I hope it didn't. Compute finish. Let's look at the model. Is it going to jump? Is it going to... Yes. Woohoo! Victory! Fan Oxo. Or was it a victory? Yeah, yeah. It was a victory. Yeah, I'm cursing in you're, Swedish you're, because I'm happy. <laughs> you're, you're cursing of <laughs> happiness. <laughs> Yay! Fan Oxo forgot. Um... When you curse in Swedish, it's still family-friendly international, Johannes. It's a hack. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So here's the main model. Let's see how long this takes to compute. Compute finished. Wow. There. Okay. So this was just a test. I'm going to go back to, to here. And I'm going to revert my move my movements because I and I'm going to save this again. Ah, uh, we have the waiting screen now. Hit me. The, okay, we have taken two wins today, two W's. Um, after like a uh, constant uh, row of losses. So this belt tensioner thing, uh, I heard about it yesterday also. What did you say? Let's see it on Mr. B Fox 1775. The belt tensioner should be on the slack side of the belt, not the drive side. And we also had here someone's found from Google. Where should a belt tensioner be placed? The best place for a tensioner on a belt drive is on the inside of the belt against the slack side. Do they say two different things? No. no? Uh, yeah, a two little bit different things. And now for the first time, I understand what I mean. I thought there's no slack anywhere, but uh, they they mean the side that is not driving. Uh, so let me just update this again since I want to revert the movement I just did. Okay, my heart is lighter. And uh, we have the pole here still going strong. We now have 60% are for longer streams with breaks instead of three shorter streams per day. Interesting. Let's keep it up a little more, a little while longer for those of you who have missed voting here. And pe people in chat sadly saw that you left me hanging with a high five earlier, so I need to have a rematch on that high five. Did I? There we go. Thank you, sir. That should be illegal. Leaving one hanging with a high five. 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear. Uh, Jack Lefebvre. The slack side means the side that's being pushed by the driving pull and not the side being pulled. Yep. So... Bradley says, if you have a fixed tensioner, it really doesn't matter which side. If you have a sprung tensioner, it really must be on the slack side of the belt. Oh, that makes so much sense. I've been thinking about that. I want a fixed tensioner. So actually, maybe the ten tensioners could be... I've been thinking a little pragmatically around the tensioners. And if someone doesn't know what we're talking about, let me show you. Um, let's show... Okay, so now this model is alive and kicking again. woo And boy, does it feel good! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, indeed, Hannes 3000! <laughs> it feels absolutely splendid, like a sunny afternoon. As sunny as my sunny shirt today. Yes. Um, so here's the belt tensioner, and the band is... The the belt is following neatly when we drag it along, and um, since this is moving counterclockwise, this tensioner is now on the driving side. So the tensioner is actually on the side that people do not recommend, but I want it fixed. I don't want it sprung with a spring, um, but I want it adjustable. But I think that these rules are made for high RPM industrial solutions where you have a motor and a factory and this belt is going 24 seven and you install it and you want it to run five years. If you, if the, if something in problems with the belt, you lose us $2 million per hour in production loss. <laughs> so there is the rules. And I th don't think they really apply always into our application. I think the stresses and the forces in the marble machine is ridiculous compared to industrial applications. So, all this ad advice is great to learn the best practices, but sometimes we can also be a little uh, lenient with the rules. A little bit cheeky. And I think I want a tensioner where we need space. So if I realize that I want a muting lever to go here and I need a tensioner anywhere, then I can use the tensioner to get the belt out of the way. So I'm, I think, um, and here's our other tensioner. Um, I think I will, though, I am happy to have learned this rule. So thank you for educating me. Um, I'm going to put it in the design requirements. Um, belt tensioner uh, praxis put on slack side. Um, best practices, it's called, isn't it? Best practices put on Slack side. Um, but if we can be helped with space by having it on the drive side, I am very sure we can get away with it. Um, you know what? Rules are meant to be broken. <laughs> um, Oh, I'm happy for. I'm happy that our model is um, back to. I'm officially ending the poll right here now. We ended with 59% on longer streams with breaks, so it's not a landslide victory there. So 59 towards longer streams with breaks. And the them. other, what, what was what, what was the other alternative? Three shorter streams where where we have three separate ones. And how many how many did they have? The other half of hundred? For, Forty one then. Okay, because I didn't know if you had like a third I don't care. Yeah, or... one one only me streaming the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we fell down to fifty eight percent. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much, people. We have heard your voices. Very, very helpful. Almost everyone voted also who watches the stream. That was brilliant. That's fantastic. Wow. So that's a good tool for us to remember if we want to help with anything. Do some polls is nice. I'm going to insert... It's very nice. I'm going to insert um, our registrator into our master assembly for fun. Look at that. 
up there. Oh, there we go. There we go. And it's sit at a strange place. I'm going to fix that. Um, a sideways uh, little thing with this plane. Um, let's change the length of this plane. I'm always positioning my designs on, on uh, offset planes. That usually is a nice way. I'm saying well, the ho when there's so much yellow <laughs> snow down in the timeline. Um, but this is this is. Um, oh Jesus! It's, it's never mind. Never mind. Okay, what should we do now? What should we do now, Hannes Paradis? I just want to hang out with my chat mates here. They're so nice. Where is the... Um, where is the beaters? Um, so we had the beaters. Are they hidden in the drivetrain assembly? So, but this whole ordeal was to create more space between this uh, loop drum and this kick drum, and I think we have we have managed to do so. Make the machine a little bit bigger, but hey. Okay, so let me find the drum beaters. Try train assembly. Maybe they're on the drive shaft here. Oh yeah, I wanna... When I show that gear, this pulley right here should not be there. So let me head over and clean that up because I show that gear and it should not be in here. So let's delete that one. Spring cleaning. It's spring after all. <laughs> as, we, as we said this morning, it's spring. And we had spring rolls for lunch, right? Yeah. <laughs> like that. We have... So let me do the same with the loop drum. We had the same stray... I still saw it in there. Delete. Did I still see it? Sometimes you have to delete twice. Perhaps this is something you can help uh, an audience member with, Martin, here. Uh, do you know if the merch chip ships from Europe? I'm thinking of getting some, but would like to prevent extra customs charges. And if I remember correctly, they ship from both Europe and the US, right? Yeah. There's two separate ones. We use Spring and they're from both, right? Yeah, there's two separate ones and sometimes it's an issue because they don't have the same uh, stuff for Europe and US. So we approve uh, the quality, um, but they send us the European quality only. So we approve the quality and then we realize like a year later that they were sending something else in the US. So that was how we learned that, I think. Um, okay. So why is why are you still here? I'm not talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this morning in the shower was the first time Do I was. Do tell. <laughs> It was the first time I was dreading. I stayed up too late yesterday night. So this morning in the shower was the first time I was dreading uh, the Marble Machine 3. I was like, oh, 
will it actually work? This means <laughs> that you have feelings for it. That's a good thing. Yeah, I, I, I guess, I guess. Okay, we cleaned out these um, stupid uh, gears. I have to just update over here, and they should be clean, clean, cleaned out from here as well. So actually, when this is done, I think it's a great time to um, look at the tutorial from, what, what was the name? From Simon. Yeah, so what we did this morning with the contact sets, which uh, where everything started to, to break down, it turned into a slight horror show. Um, we sent the step file out and several people uh, from the community solved it in Fusion 360. And we have a tutorial on how to do that. Or maybe I should just find the CAD file and look at it. So I would summarize, I would say that this is very, very promising. The CA this CAD structure of having complicated parts just uh, drawn at the origin and moved into place with a joint. Um, it's a much more resilient way to build this model and I'm happy I found out I stumbled on the stumble block so early in the process. So let's take that as a win. That Yahoo! <laughs> <laughs> Mario has spoken. I'm going to oh try to find this. So let's, let's, uh, let's start uh, another chapter here. I'm going to open a uh, Fusion 360 file. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from one of you. I will just do this. And I will come over to you and help you find it. Okay, perfect. So we have uh, this one, this one, this one, O3. Here. Here you go. Fusion 3D file. Oh, this is so cool. So, this makes me super excited. Because when we are working on a digital model, we can work on the same thing. So, all you amazingly generous people out there, um, using your own time uh, for this project, I'm, I'm so amazed by that. And... Instead of just um, text somewhere on, on, on a web forum, you can actually send me um, send me CAD. And I can show you immediately. If you want to know the steps he has done, we can take a look at the steps yep. he did if you want to learn. I'm just going to um, uh, CAD submissions. I'm just going to make a new folder. I'm going to save this in there. CAD submissions. Simon Bianche. Yes. That sounds French. French, French, Canadian. I don't know. So let's see here what is happening. But this is exactly what I tried to do. So let's. So what I wanted to show let me go in and see what has been done first. I, 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 I can look myself. Detective work. So the joint limits. These are the joint limits. And no rest on this one. Okay, maybe that's something. It's Italian. Simon Bianche. Ah, cool. It sounds like um, alpine skier. Yeah. Like Italians are super good skiers. Um... So now I can finally show people how the muting mechanism is meant to work. <laughs> Here's a loop drum playing a note. And as soon as I let go, it goes to its rest position and it plays again. Boom. Boom. But hey, I don't want this channel to play anymore. So what do I do? I do this. I put this in the muted position and this rotates freely. 
and I have an evil plan. Can we make this a volume control? Ooh. Because what would happen? Um, so you have to imagine uh, springs here. You know what? I am going to insert some. S Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to give a quick shout out to RSC Trigger 003 also, who also sent in a CAD file, who also had the same um, solution earlier today. So, and then I, then I, I want to learn what this, what they think went wrong when I tried this this morning. Probably it was just mess. I me? think they fixed your constraints or something. They said, right? Yeah, I want to know like where the constraints. But let's let let's t take that soon. I'm just gonna show you this spring is <laughs> massive. Um, I just want to show everyone here. There's a spring there, and there's going to be another spring here. Uh, here. Wappa da ba doo. So those won't animate now, but these springs will um, be adjustable, and they will take care of the um, drum action. So look here now how one spring is tensioned, and when the thing come back, the spring will keep the drumstick from resting uh, on the drum. Okay, okay, okay. And then when you mute the springs, okay, I have to. The springs follow this movement, so I'm going to try to combine. I'm going to try to just glue these springs to this gray thing, just to make this painfully obvious. Um, so let's combine this with this, this with this, with this. Did I break everything now? <laughs> I see some warning signs there. Oh, yeah. Update of joint geometry needed after geometry change. Yeah, because it's not working now. Leave me with your CAD for one minute and it <laughs> breaks. <laughs> I just think maybe we have to open the joint and miss snap. <laughs> Missing reference. So let's let me let me just fix this. Okay, we're back. Why would that be? So what is the snap? So today has been a motion link day. Let me try to rejoin these. Um, anyway, the springs are moving here. The springs move with this. And my idea is that this position is fully muted when this wheel is not touching. Let's make the browser tree a little bit smaller. So now it's fully muted. But what happens if we go to an in-between position like this, where this is tensioned but just a little bit? That should result in a small little tap, which should result that we can play and then I pull the lever. Imagine. What's most boring with automated mechanical music is that it only have 127 velocity. Like, it's only max. It's like on or off. It's like... Um, and so maybe we could even add this to be a volume function. So the muting lever... Basically, the muting lever goes on like a gradient from full on to 11 <laughs> to from 11 <laughs>
and slowly down to, to silent. Not like from 11 to silent. It has some steps in between there. Might mess up the musical timing. Those are the things that would be fun. I think we should prototype this in a scale like 1 to 10, a 3D print or something. Mm -hmm. I think that would be so much fun. I think a lot of people out there would be interested in doing that. Okay, let's check their tutorials. Let's see here. You need to take this step by step. That's always a good lesson. Hopefully this also helps with future assemblies joints. I start by grounding the two axles. Oh, this tutorial is awesome. Here we go. Next step. Use Revolut setting. Then create a joint between axis of lever and axle. Oh, Revolut from the beginning. Not sure it matters. I added min and max constraints. Yeah. So no resting on... I had rest... I had rest on two things. So maybe this was what I missed. Okay. Again, constrain axis of beater and lever. Add rest position of the beater. Yeah. And that's it. Constrain axis of wheel. Yeah. Add contact set between wheel and beater. I made a screen recording me doing these steps, but something went wrong and you... This tutorial was like spot on. So you'll be able to understand what's happening anyway. And I would love the little extra message down there. Also meant to be studying for uni right now, but I'm procrastinating by doing your work instead of how. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> we we truly encourage um, this kind of procrastination. <laughs> <laughs> lovely, Simon. Absolutely lovely. <clears throat> so the issue I had before is that when I was moving this, the the um, the yellow part didn't rotate uh, with this uh, with this section. And as someone pointed out in the feedback, to have this pivot point separate from this pivot point is optional extra. I think we will do it for space, for space reasons. Wait, 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 wait. maybe, yeah, may, maybe, maybe we don't have to. We, we'll, we'll see. Awesome. Yeah. So what to do next, actually? Yeah, I, where we're at. Where we're at. Let's go and check the master file. I, sh I heard something about procrastination, um, which I think applied to you, Simon, today. Um... The worst form of procrastination is when you do great things when you procrastinate, like you did today. So if you have like a to-do list with 10 points, when you work on your like number four and five items, that's the most dangerous things. Because it's still super productive, but you're shying away from actually fulfilling your potential uh, to, to go at the number one item. And during the whole autumn, when I was going to give up on the War Machine X, I really didn't feel good because it was hard to give up. And now when I made Marble Machine 3, the whole purpose of my whole existence, and this is number one on my to-do list, and I'm doing that every day, it's it's really, really exciting. So I wish yeah. everyone uh, for you to not do number five, which is maybe CAD for the Marble Machine 3, but to like try to give your number ones all the attention all the time. Yeah, we created meaning of life right here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm completely toast, Hannes. You're toast? Yeah, I'm toast. I I have to think about... I don't know if we can... Uh, yeah, I'm completely toast um, of all the adversity from Fusion 360 Day, but I'm also completely 
uh, in love with the interactions from 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 the wonderful viewers. I don't I don't know what to do next. Yeah, it's been brilliant, and I'm blushing with all the love that's been co been coming my way. You're so nice in chat. It's my privilege to sit here and talk to Martin, and you're being so nice. I really love that so much. It's a nice corner of the internet, and uh, yeah. And uh, you all are uh, creating this together with us. We've really been missing that. So we're so happy to be back. But I think we should wrap this yeah. up and I should regroup uh, my brain. And we will be back uh, very soon with some more cutting of the Marble Machine 3. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.